Hello and welcome to Drafted. I'm your host, Michael Henning. We got a fast 30 minutes for you. I'm going to be going through the Toronto Blue Jays and the Boston Red Sox highlights as they wind up their three game series at the Sky Dome. And then we're going to kick it over to our hockey analysts so they can do a play by play breakdown of the game two between the Pittsburgh Penguins and the Detroit Red Wings down in Joe Louis Arena. But first, we're going to take a commercial break from our sponsors, Gillette. And then you're going to come back and I'm going to show you some excerpts of some interviews I did. Some really exciting interviews. I have uh, Jamie Porteous and, and his student, Charlie Johnstone, who's visually impaired but doesn't lack anything in the heart department as they show us a little bit of the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. I also have 2005 World Lacrosse Champion Tim O'Brien from the Toronto Rock. And then we'll end the segment tonight with an up-and-coming soccer superstar. Her name is Madison. She wears number four for the sky blue little monkeys, and she's, she's got some great words of wisdom that we can end the show on. All this and more coming up on The Score after this. Welcome to The Score. I'm Michael Henning. I'm here with Jamie Porteous and Charlie Johnstone, competitors in the Canadian Sports Jiu-Jitsu and Grappling Championships. The man on my right, Jamie Porteous, was first place and uh, in the heavyweight division. And the man on my left is Charlie Johnstone, 15% uh, vision. He's visually impaired, but he placed second runner-up in the 2009 Jiu-Jitsu super Championships. Super, super heavyweight. Uh, Jamie, Charlie, tell us a bit about Jiu-Jitsu. It's uh, mostly based on tactile movements. So it's like when you're in contact with someone. And uh, it's very similar to wrestling, which um, you know we all have a bit of a background in from high school and university, right? Jamie, you won the 2009. Congratulations, by the way. Thank you very much. You've also won um, three, four CIU wrestling championships? Uh, actually, two. Um, I started at Brock in uh, 1998, and uh, I actually came fourth place in 1998 uh, with the Rookie of the Year at Brock, which was a little bit of an eye-opener for me because I had just won two junior national championships. Um, not to toot my own horn, but after that, uh, I had two CIU golds and a bronze after that. Now, is it true in high school I, uh, I beat you 3-2 in a match in, in high school? No. Um, well, you're leading into some ultimate fighting. I know that's pretty big out there. People want to know about the UFC. How are you coming along with that? When are we going to see you in the octagon? <laughs> um, actually, I, quite a few of my friends uh, are making the transition from wrestling to Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu now are fighting. Uh, they were fighting in an organization called TKO, which has just uh, recently fallen. Uh, a new organization has come up. It's called M1. A good friend of mine who's actually fighting in that uh, on June 13th, uh, I train uh, on and off with him also. Uh, he's a fantastic fighter. So you know what? I can see myself, I would say, give me a, a couple more years uh, um, making the transition from wrestling to jiu-jitsu and working a lot on my stand-up. And I, I would say in the next couple of years you could probably see me in the octagon. It would be nice. And, uh, I have some sports therapy background for like m uh, muscle injuries and cramping and stuff. And I told Jamie that if he was ever to go into the mixed martial arts world that I would be his corner guy. Because uh, I'd obviously like to see him succeed. Can you show maybe the viewers just a couple, like I know Bruce and Jiu Jitsu is mostly on your back. Yes. Maybe throw like a little, uh, little choke hold or a throw or maybe just pull each other's hair a bit. Something. I can show you uh, one, which is uh, it's a pretty famous one. It's the guillotine choke. What you want to do is take your opponent, and you're gonna, what you're going to do is you're going to snap him down forward. Once you've snapped him down forward, you're going you're gonna to slide your hand underneath his neck. And then you, what you're doing is you're walking up in your pine pressure until you see the, the submission right there. The that's tap a, out. That's a pretty popular one. That's a pretty popular standing up one. Good. Uh, Jamie, you hold the mic. Charlie will do something on me. Give me a guillotine choke or something like that. And then that. I can uh, commentate. This would be a guillotine ah, choke. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, submission. Ah. Mike, you look a little red. I didn't see I didn't see that coming that quick. That was that was awesome, Charlie. And thank you for not hurting me. Anyways, thanks a lot for the time. Thank you, Mike. Congratulations, Charlie. Jamie. Thank you, Mike. How you doing? I'm Michael Henning for the score. I'm here with 2005 NLL champion Toronto Rock, number 77, Tim o, Tim O'Brien, the surgeon. Tim, how you doing? Great, Mike. You? I'm excellent. Thanks for uh, joining us today. Wanted to tell the viewers a bit about yourself, how you got involved in lacrosse. Tell them a little bit about how long you've been doing it and, uh, and what you love about the sport. 
Well, I, uh, I did get involved in high school. Uh, some friends of mine uh, said it was great conditioning and uh, good for hockey. I was playing hockey at the time. And they said you can come out, and grab a stick, and swing it at people. That's what they were saying. What people won't know, unless they're in the lacrosse culture, is that you're uh, a bit of a goon, an enforcer, a policeman, um, a tough guy. Uh, how did you get involved in that part of lacrosse where you kind of protect your teammates? And what goes involved in that? How, how do you get involved in that part of the sport? And, and why is it so important to your team and your sport? I just stick up for the people that are on my team. Um, I don't let anybody intimidate them or push them around, you know. Uh, you got to give your goal scorers some space out there and uh, to do their thing. And, you know, if you uh, pound out a few guys, then they get their space and they create goals. We, we saw you in the intro there. You, you definitely got some hands. You can score some goals. But I think what, uh, what most people see with these uh, cement blocks here is that um, you know how to chuck the knuckles. <laughs> Maybe you can, uh, we can throw the, the ball around here a little bit and uh, you show me a couple tips for, uh, for the kids out there. Always uh, interested in teaching some people some lacrosse. Excellent. So how do I hold this, this stick here? Well, it uh, depends if you're right-handed or left-handed. Being a right-handed person... Tim, hold the, hold the mic for a second. Being right-handed, or uh, what are you, righty or lefty? Uh, lefty in hockey. Okay, so you want whatever natural, you, uh, whatever hand you are, keep it at the top, and that's more of a leverage. And your bottom hand, you want to keep it on the bottom here, and that'll give you direction as to where uh, to where you want to pass or shoot. So, um, you want to give it a try here? Is that comfortable for you? That feels good, yeah. Where's that? I believe I'm ambidextrous. <laughs> Mike has good use of both hands. So, the ball in here. So that's called cradling it. What he's doing right now, it's called cradling it and uh, it uses like a g-force kind of momentum to keep the ball in. You want to use the weight of the ball can't throw it in here. You want to use the weight of the ball to uh, pretty much keep it in there. It's like swinging a pail of water around. If you keep swinging it, it's not going to come out, but as soon as you bring it up top and you keep it tipped over, water will come out. And he scores. Yes, I am amazing. Tim O'Brien, the surgeon. Why, how did you get that nickname, the surgeon? Well, uh, my first couple of fights in junior lacrosse, uh, I left uh, some pretty bloody messes. So they thought it would be appropriate. <laughs> Tim, if we were to get into scrap right now, what would happen? Like, between you and me, close, like, do I have a shot? Do I have a chance? Because you got to pretty face. You don't want to get that mug messed up, so you don't want to take any shots. I am a bit of a powerhouse. <laughs> I'm Mike Canning for the score with the surgeon Tim O'Brien. Thank you, Tim, for helping us out. Hi. Welcome to the score. My name's Michael Henning. And I'm here with my niece, Madison. And what position in the soccer? Like, what's your favorite place to play on the soccer team? My favorite place to play is goalie. You like to play goalie? Why is that you like to play goalie? Because it's really fun and you get to stop the ball every time the other team's trying to get a goal. And how do you feel if you make a big save? I really feel, I feel really proud because I... If if I don't get it, then I say, congratulations, you got a you got a score. And and if and and if I stop it, I say, good try. Maybe you'll get it again. And she's lining up for a goal, and she goal. That was number four, Madison Miller from the Sky Blue soccer team, brought to you by Little Monkeys. Oh, she's doing an encore. I'm chasing her from behind. Number four comes up, kicks it, and she scores! <laughs>